don't think I wrote it out, but I have the, um, is, it, is it working? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did you already start it? <laughs> or you just have it up? I started it to make sure it was working. Oh, okay. We're starting early, <laughs> but we're not really starting. We have a few more minutes, right? It's on the front mic only. 7, 10. Oh, it is. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. So, oh, so turn it on to 3. I guess it is 7, 10. You can, because I'll, I'll um, put this stream up, too. All right, let's get started on, let's get started on mm -hmm. Biblical Dream Interpretation, our first class. We have about four dreams to go over. They're all short, but they're all really fantastic. So, um, let's pray. Father, thank you that interpretation belongs to you, that just as um, Joseph said, does not interpretation belong to God? Please tell me your dream. Father, we look to you for those downloads of what these dreams mean. I pray that you stir our hearts, our spirits, that you tune our ears to yours, Lord, and that the fullness of these dreams that you want to bring forth this evening would come forth. So I praise you and give you glory and just thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So this is the dream. I had a dream that I made a decision to graduate high school a year early. I was wearing my cap and gown. The ceremony was about to get started, so I took my place in line. It was very exciting, and I felt joy. So when you're doing um, dream interpretation, just that review that um, when you get a dream, then you diagram it, because in the Western society, we have a way of staying in our left brain. And so if you just read the dream, if you write it down, you just read it that way, you kind of stay in that left brain mindset of what does this mean mm -hmm. you know and you kind of get into analyzing and so when you diagram it it pulls you into your right mind which is always a good place to be mm -hmm. that more creative side that more ability to see symbols and um, just that creative side so that's why I encourage you and I have to tell you it's happened to me over and over again where I've written out a dream and and just feeling lazy or whatever I'm like oh I'll just figure this out and and I it's not until I start to diagram it that it'll start to unfold for me. So sometimes it happens when I'm writing it down, but often when I just start to diagram it, which this is a simple way of diagramming, you can um, do your own style. If, if you're interested, I can bring other, other ways of doing it for you, but this is just something that I kind of go back to, and, and, I, and the people I've seen interpret dreams, they pretty much do it this way as well. So let me read it again. And as I read it, just imagine that this is your dream. Imagine that it's you, and that will also help you see more about it as well. I had a dream that I made a decision to graduate high school a year early. I was wearing my cap and gown. The ceremony was about to get started, so I took my place in line. It was very exciting, and I felt joy. So Sharon, I have to ask you, did you think about acceleration when I read this dream? <laughs> when I picked this dream, what's so exciting is when I picked this dream, I wasn't even planning on talking about acceleration tonight. So Sharon woke up this morning, and that was on her heart, and then it just, I felt prompted, and then I do this first dream, and I'm going, wow, it's totally about acceleration, isn't it? So what's, um, the, uh, and then the next thing we do is, 
get a different marker besides two black ones. <laughs> Not sure who, who did that. So what stands out to you? Or who's the dream about? The dreamer. The dreamer. And why is it about the dreamer? Because they're the one who dreamed the dream. Yes. And it's because they're involved. Sometimes when you have a dream, you're just watching what's going on, and then the dream can be about other things. It can be about intercession. God's putting it on your heart to pray about a situation. But if the dreamer's actively involved in the dream, then it's about the dreamer. And as you can see, there's no one else even present. So this is, this is a really good one to see that it's about the dreamer. So, I'll give you a clue. <laughs> I forgot to write high school. So is that significant yes. that it's high school? Why? Because it's high. It's upward. It's upward. upward calling of Jesus, huh? Yes. What scripture is that, Karen? <laughs> is it is it Philippians? Is Second Corinthians what for the upward call of God? Upward calling. Okay. All right. I love that whole section. Okay. So, um, what else stands out? She made the decision, which which was a conscious thing. Decision, so the choice, right? Right. I'm assuming this is she. It is. <laughs> and that goes back to uh, Revelation again, that um, we make that choice to be the bondservant. And once we get our ear pierced, <laughs> you're like, what are you doing? And we Carol Burnett thing. You know? uh, <laughs> we make the choice of leaning into <laughs> Jesus. Everyone's just starting to get that. That's what I saw at the end. It's very like that. <laughs> so Sunday morning when I was talking, we're all going to be doing this. <laughs> But to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Is that what you mean? No, I'm talking about the upward calling. Okay, well, that's that's what it's coming up with, so I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. He says, I, 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 I haven't apprehended it yet. In other words, he isn't complete in it. Yeah. Paul isn't. But this, this I know, he says. Right. That, yeah. uh, that he's going to continue with it, searching out the upward call of God. I don't have my Bible with me, so I can't. Okay, I can't read it anyway. But I always think of I always think of Philippians three, but I think it's, it's Philippians similar. Philippians three fourteen. Philippians three fourteen. Can you read that? Sure. Let me click on it. <laughs> Philippians three fourteen. I press on towards the goal of winning the prize for which God is. Uh, has called me heavenward in Jesus Christ, which that's the NIV version, which is what I used to. So sorry. Which version is that? NIV. Oh, okay. So the um, home. Yeah. The. Okay, let's move on to the other wood. Um, I think it is in First Corinthians as well, too, Helen. Or you probably have that. So then, then the next thing. That she made the choice. She um, made the choice to press in and to. Um, it's well. We'll go back to it. So, what else stands out to you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was just saying that goes back to what we were just studying in Revelation. How, when you know, we can choose to accelerate ourselves so that we can bring on Christ. You know? Oh, speed the day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and to, she did, decided to graduate early. That's important too because yeah. she made the decision to to accelerate, mm -hmm. if you will. Yes. Her, her learning, her pressing in. Accelerate her learning, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, that that scripture sure does pay off. The one about. I haven't yet apprehended it, but I press on because that whole thing is this dream that yes. she made the decision to apprehend it. to to press on <laughs> to the high calling of, of Christ. Mm -hmm. but, well, goosebumps oh. again. Translation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, it's 
Philippians 3.12, I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose that Jesus Christ has called me to fulfill and wants me to discover. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and getting the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. Now, if you read that in the King James, which is the one I'm familiar with, it's, it's the same thing. That's a lot more words than the King James. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so it's the same thing. thing. Well, it's, uh, okay. it's all passion. Proverbs in the New Testament. Yeah, the full Passion translation is not available yet, but what is available is... The New Testament, Psalms, Proverbs, and the Song so of Solomon. Song, yeah. His first, the first book he translated was the Song of Solomon because yeah. it was releasing the passion of God, how much God loves us. Mm -hmm. so. so, how long are you agreeing? It's not Second Corinthians after all. It is the Philippians. Point? It's got to be the Philippians. Okay. okay. Yeah. So. We've got a whole lot of good stuff just in that first part of the dream. <laughs> so this goes to show you if you have a dream and you only get part of it interpreted, um, that can be that can be a well of revelation and goodness right there, treasure. So the next thing, well, we we usually circle all our things that are important. important. Um, so is anything else standing up? Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I have. Okay. I'm going to say it's a crown and robe. Oh, wow. That is awesome. Yeah. Crown and robe. That's an awesome. So the ceremony is... Um, <laughs> so, so in... Well, go ahead. Since we're, in, <laughs> since, we're in, since we're in Revelation and we're talking about the Bride of Christ being there in the throne room uh -huh. in their crowns and their robes. She has made herself ready. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. Well, and she's made, she's accelerated herself, really. And that's what it says okay. in that first verse that we looked at, that yeah. if we can, we can make ourselves ready. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, are we all stepping into this dream? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And the bride has made herself ready. That's so awesome. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> okay, so um, so and if I was interpreting this dream for which I guess we are, and I am, <laughs> I would. <laughs> I am yeah. back with you now. I was in heaven. That's where I was. <laughs> so, um, I would encourage the dreamer to do uh, to look up crown in the Bible, to look up the verses. So Helen said there's a lot in Revelation, but I would encourage them to look it up. And then if they said, well, what do you think? I would say Proverbs 25 too, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> and that's the Proverbs 25 too is so good because um, when you start to interpret people's dreams, that sometimes they can come to you to interpret it. And so when you start to stretch people to be able to understand their own dreams, which is the, which is the key or the goal, because then you're hearing God for yourself. Then you're, you're able to mine your dream for um, the treasure that God has placed there for you. And so um, the Proverbs 25 too, if you can get people interpreting their own dreams and searching them out, God has so much more he's going to show them, you know? And um, and so that's why we want to just spread dream interpretation everywhere, that everyone hears God and everyone chases after him and, and gets those treasures of him revealing himself to us, basically. So it goes back to Revelation 1.1. <laughs> yeah. So the ceremony is going to start. Took She took her place in line. She was excited and joyful. Anything else that stands out there to you? Took her place. Took her place. The ceremony. The ceremony. Okay. And back to the um, that she was prepared as well. Made herself ready. Prepared. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the same thing. Yeah. Okay. 
So when she took her place in line, she wasn't in line. She wasn't, you know, the other people were there, and then she stepped into it. Mm -hmm. So what could that represent? Well, she's stepping into the line of, um, right, right, right. of no, the thing. Yeah, she is, I just, you're in heaven? Yeah. <laughs> so it would be like taking her stepping position. Stepping, stepping into her position. Into the authority. Her authority. Her, her lane. Her lane. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, her lane. I love that idiom, that, that idea of staying in your lane. Yes. And recognizing where her place was. Right, exactly. That we, that we each have a part. She stepped each. into the place that she was supposed to be in. That's so good. Yeah. And then, and then what happens? And she was filled with joy and happiness and exhilaration. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, she the stepped reward. in and went. The reward. The reward. Yeah. Yes, and it goes to show too that when we are placed where God would have us. There is that feeling. It's almost like the, the gears coming together and that yeah. smooth um, things flowing and moving together and stuff. So, is there any other comments? John, what do you, what's... Well, it uh, sounds which, like what St. Paul was running for that prize. The, 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 to, to complete his race. So, oh. and then there's, then, you know, there's the next level after that. That's right. This is the beginning of the... You go through the training in high school, it's like you go through the training, and then you look forward to something. Either you're going to go do some great work, or maybe go for more education. It's a, it's a growth. Growth. Yeah, that's good. Where am I with that? Growth process, huh? Yes, I, I think there's probably a lot of anticipation there with it, mm -hmm. excited and joyful. To go to the next level. That's really good. That's what uh, they call those things, mileposts. They're mileposts. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's almost like a rite of passage. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> yes, how do you spell that right? R I T. -E. That's, what I, that's how I saw it. But. That could be too. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I should have stuck with. Huh? Right I, I, what I also love about this dream is there's no fear. You know, sometimes when you're like finishing one thing and you're starting something new, it's, it can be scary. And there's absolutely no fear in that dream. You're excited, you're joyful, you're mm -hmm. like, woohoo, let's do this, you know. <laughs> like, and you're doing it early. Uh -huh. I love that. I love that. That's true. Is there anything else? All right. So when we come to the end, um, to interpret this dream, I give you the first sentence: "Dreamer, this dream is about you." <laughs> that's a that's a real key. I know it's like a joke, but it's actually really helps me when I'm going to interpret, like if I'm going to, um, when I was first going through all my online classes about it, is that that's often what I would establish, dream or the streams about you. And it reveals, and it indicates, and it shows. And so, um, yes, I did a thesaurus on all the words for reveal, show, right. indicate. So <laughs> you're not repeating yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so otherwise it was, it shows, it shows, it shows, but, it shows. But when you say that, it helps you focus in. Yes, and it just is that first step of what the dream is about. Okay. So who would like to interpret this dream for the dreamer? Or just the dream is about, dream with this dream is about you. You have agreed and stepped into a higher learning process that makes you ready for what God has for you in the future. And you're, you're, you know where you belong in this place, and you have stepped into it willingly, and you're full of joy about it in anticipation of what is to come. That was awesome. Yes. That was <laughs>
Yes, I love how you use the word agreed. I was that's that's excellent. So yes, that's the interpretation. And um, so then after, thank you, Mara, getting the photo of it. So then after we interpret it, what do we do? We pray for them. Pray Let's for the dreamer. Step this way. Oh, no, too far. Go back. I'm using your shadow as a. Oh. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Trying to be taller. Um, so who would like to pray for the dreamer? This is where I don't I lose eye contact with everybody. <laughs> so that's when I call on someone, Karen. <laughs> okay. Dear Jesus, I just thank you so much for Sharon and I thank you that she has made agreement with you to transition into the next level. Lord God, I thank you that she is stepping into her place in line, that she has made herself ready, Lord God, and your word says that you have good plans for her, plans to prosper her and not to harm her, Lord God. So she has every reason to be excited and joyful for what you are going to do in and with her. And we just praise you for the acceleration, and we praise you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, that was awesome. And if you remember what I said when I wrote this dream out, I said that we just have a bunch of short dreams, but you know as well as I do that a short dream can be packed with blessings from God. Did you ask her what she thought about it? Oh no, this that dreamer's not here. Okay. They may be online. If you're on oh no, we're videoing online. this. If you're online and watching this. We're on live. Then you have a are we live? Oh yeah. okay. Then we got it to work. I've been running this whole time, guys. Okay, so she might be watching. (laughs) If you're watching, give us feedback, please. You know who you are who had that dream. And I know who you are. So we will get. It's not working this time. Oh my gosh. It's okay when you're at home and you do those things and only your husband sees you. <laughs> it's a little bit harder when you're out. I meant to do that. No, not at all. So, okay. Next dream. Not yet. Is anyone back on? Did they? There are people on here. Oh, good. Thanks for coming back after all our trouble. We will post the first part of the class maybe tomorrow. Because we did video it, but we just having internet troubles. Okay, so which dream am I going to do, Lord? I think that one. Oh, I like that one. Let's do this one. My son came home in a new work uniform. It was white with orange pinstripes and looked like a NASCAR driver uniform. It even had... Amoco, is that how you say that? A M O C O? Mm-hmm. Amoco written across the center of the front and then said underneath in small letters, the new day shift. The new day shift. The new day shift. Yeah, but I'm, oh, the yeah. new day. <laughs> <laughs> so to uh, Dreamer. Sasan. Then my son came home. Let's change that. My son came home with a new work uniform. Thank you. I have a thing. <laughs> New work uniform. It's white with orange stripes. Yeah, that is awesome, Helen. When you can't see, you learn how to hear and memorize. That's really good. Orange stripes. Orange with an E. Like a NASCAR uniform. Wow, you're awesome. (laughs) Across 
the same for that. And yeah, and we'll coat center of them. Yeah, that's a fascinating part. I, I held it out with like it's, well, you know, me on flashing lights going through my brain, so. <laughs> <laughs> Shift. I love that. I do too. I've already got it. I mean, well, and I'm like, <laughs> it's just a matter of where you put the stress on those words because yeah. it's a new day. It's shift. Thank but, you. That's what I'm getting. But the, new but day. the shift, shift. Yeah. The shift yeah. to the new day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm getting this hour. Yeah. Oh, I even have a drawing. So it was a. Uh, a M O C O. This is what it looked like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. The new, like it was smaller letters, so it's smaller letters. They shift. Okay. The new day shift, okay. Yeah. All right, you guys are chomping at the bit. Yeah, yeah. most yeah. definitely. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have an arm wrestle here to see who goes first. For our American Motor Company, too, if you want to know that. Uh -huh. American Motor Company, or is it American oil? American Motor Company. Oh, American Motor Oil. Oh, American Motor oh. Company makes American oil. Okay. The, the whole, if you've ever seen a symbol for the Amico, it's actually a sun rising, and then you've got the new day. Oh, so two times right there you got the sun rising. Because the new day starts with the sunrise. Right. So it's American Motor Oil Company? Not oil, but Motor Company. Oh, okay. All right. Whew, it's hard to keep up with you guys. <laughs> okay, so you're saying that it's... Well, both new day shift and the symbol of Emico is a sunrise. Uh -huh. So, okay, so those are two times, right? Yeah, so it's new day shift. Shift, sunrise, yeah. Okay. Which is exciting, all the way around, sunrise. <laughs> okay, so who's this dream about? The dreamer. Oh, no, she's watching. No, she's done. Yeah. Yeah, she didn't say anything or anything. She, it was, she observed. She yeah, observed. She observed. Does anyone want me to read the dream again? No. No, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to jump in? Don't stall here. Let's go for this. Okay. <laughs> okay, what are the... Give me three things that stand out to you. I know this one does, so that's one. It's the sun to start with. The sun stands out to you. <clears throat> New work uniform. Okay, so that's three, but there's something... You've got new work, new day, new day, uh -huh. and the sun, and the uh -huh. sun. But is there something else? The oh, sun and sun. Oh, yeah. home. He came home. And, he, and the coming home, you think that's enough? Um, is that in the Bible, coming home? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Prodigal son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this may be S-O-N as in her oh, child. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, think it doesn't work. <laughs> it's like, we'll see if this works. I think this is really light. Oh, gracious. Okay. Ah. So we're going to go back to black, wherever it is. Hit it for myself. Oh, glad you guys can't see this. <laughs> oh, I keep telling God I have to live with me for the rest of my life. So something's got to change. <laughs> I need some help. So he came home. Hallelujah. Yeah. In two different ways. Okay, so that's, we could be the prodigal son, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we establish that, that right there, that right there could bring the dreamer much joy, right? Uh -huh. Your son's coming home. But that's not all. There's more. <laughs> so the new work uniform, what does that mean? What can that represent? You got a new job. <laughs> you got a new job. Well, it could be, could 
Because I see home, and home can be ministry. Yeah. So new work uniform could be like... Um, but wait a minute. In the prodigal son is coming no. home his ministry. What is no. it? It's, it's actually coming physically back to... Uh -huh. But what does it represent? If the prodigal son's story, what does that represent? Coming back to relationship with God. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. But when I see the new work uniform, that's what makes me come back to the other part because when he comes back mm -hmm. home and he's back in relationship with God, he's got the new work to do. So, so he's, and, but if you look at Revelation, what are they clothed in? Robes. White robes. So when you come home, you are, you're, yeah. But the father did put the ring on his finger. Mm -hmm. So it is that you are, um, you, you're clothed anew. You're whatever you were wearing before, right. God's mm -hmm. given you the new. Right. So that's good. Mm -hmm. So. And is it, is it orange? Perseverance. Orange. Orange can be perseverance. Perseverance. And what's white? Holiness. Holiness. Holy Spirit. Purity. So that, yeah. Holiness. Holiness. Purity. And so it, it speaks of that walk, right? Yeah. So they're putting, they're, they're making a change into, and they will persevere in it. Correct? Right. Right. That's interesting. Stripes. Huh? Yeah. Orange also means harvest, too. Oh, so they could have a call of an evangelist? Is that what you're going? Or something. Whatever he's ministering, he's going to minister and mentor. So, yeah, and so clothes in the Bible um, can be that, uh, I mean, garments of praise, there's the different garments. Like, um, if you have pants, it can represent your faith walk. Shoes can, re shoes can represent walk as well. Um, you know, anything that's, you know, you think about Elijah's mantle. Was a, so you think about the different things that are mantled with um, holiness, purity, with a perseverance, and to um, tenaciously go after what God's called them to do. John, what's going through your mind? I'm not sure I'm getting some of this. Well, I, I was thinking of Revelation, how they, they, they get, later on they get white, they get presented with robes, but mm -hmm. I don't remember anything about orange stripes. And, uh, <laughs> Well, with them, with that, it's just that symbolism. So the white can represent God clothes us in white when we return to him. And the perseverance can be, I mean, the orange can be an aspect that represents that they'll persevere in their walk with okay. God. Karen? Well, uh, the NASCAR, they're going fast. They're going, you know, accelerate. Oh. <laughs> accelerate again. NASCAR acceleration. <laughs> represents a car, so that could be ministry too, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then if we go back to that orange, if it's an event or harvest, it mm -hmm. could be that that's their ministry. He's a traveling evangelist. Oh! A tra <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like that. You know, the whole Amazon American Motor Company. Oh, there's that again. <laughs> Motor Company, and then we've got the NASCAR thing going here, huh? Yeah. So that's the duel. And Rose, what did you say about the double things? What were you saying? Oh, well, the sun and the sun on the amicline, and the, you know, uh, just, yeah, <laughs> that's good because it can be God, God marking him as well. Mm -hmm. Stripes, I keep thinking of Jesus. Well, there's also um, I like stripes. Jesus is going to do the work. Yeah. I, I, I see a, a double occurrence of change also because there's a shift, which is a change. Uh -huh. okay. And then there's also a change, you know, when you have a, a sunrise, it's a change of a new day. Mm -hmm. And didn't it say that he changed into his new work uniform? Mm -hmm. He said he came home with it on. Oh, he, he came, came home with, with it on, on. Okay, yeah. yeah. I have one where it says um, Amco Center Front and then New Day Shift Uniform. Um, I just feel that that means he was—he's been sealed. Oh, the Holy Spirit. 
with that sign saying he's in a new day ship uniform, he's been given a That's good. Um, so would that be a, are you thinking of Revelation 20 verse 5 that behold I make all things new or are you thinking of a different verse? I'm thinking of um, um, the one where it says the, um, all things become new. Yeah, the old is gone, the old is, the old is gone. Um, is, that, is that Romans 8 1? All things are made new. Yeah. Bring him here a new creation, the old is gone. I think that's how it goes. I think it's Romans 8.1. New creation, the old is gone. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember OSL 1. Oh, it's in there. It is. Yeah. It's in there. Okay, so. So, John, did we answer questions? Do you still have questions? I, I see the acceleration in there. The NASCAR? Yeah. Anyone else have questions or comments? Just that he's dressed to go forward in the new thing. Second Corinthians 5.17. Yeah. Um, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and new life is begun. Yeah, that's the one that was in OSL one. Yeah, that's that's mm-hmm. good. Yeah, but it's he's now again. Here we go. He's ready for his new thing, his new day. He's shifting into it. Yes. Oh wow, this is really cool. It's a good dream. It's a very good dream. You think the dreamer's encouraged? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know the history of the sun, but yeah. Mm-hmm. This is good. And isn't that interesting because just by looking at someone's dream, we we have a, a, a window into what's going on in their lives, don't we? Yeah. And so this brings to, I mean, this is a really good dream. You're, you're delivering really good um, interpretation to the dreamer. But that's something to keep in mind that a dream, and I have had people say, you know, what does this dream mean? And sometimes you'll know what it means, but it can mean something that's a little bit hard. So, um you always want to leave the dreamer encouraged. So when you interpret, you always, you know, um, you always say it in such a way that they're going to leave encouraged. Right. Um, and then if, if it's like a negative dream or a nightmare, then you flip it and you turn those negative things, mm-hmm. what's the opposite of them, and you pray and declare that with the dreamer if they're a believer. Um, and if they're not, then you, you still pray and declare it, but you also leave them with hope. So mm-hmm. you can say, you know, you can ask questions, is this going on? And, and kind of pull it out, kind of see, and then just tread lightly, but really having the mind and heart of God to deliver messages. But again, this gives you a window into the dreamers, what's going on in their lives, and it's a very, um, uh, it's, it's a high privilege for God to yes, use us to help interpret dreams. So, with that, who would like to interpret this dream? Helen did it last time. Of course, is the new work uniform, could that be the robe of righteousness as well? Is that what that, or not? Yes, yes, because we, we talked about, um, yeah. I think definitely, it symbolizes that because of the white of it. And yeah, he talks about when we come to know him that we... We are robed in righteousness. Um, he gives us that new robe. And you think about the whole prodigal son thing, that when he came, his father put a robe in her, on him and a ring uh-huh. on his finger. So it's such a beautiful picture. So, Sharon, would you like to? And when I do interpretation, then I would just say, dreamer, this dream is about your son. And so I follow this around. And so that, like, it's already in Helen's mind. But that's how I interpret. Dream of the dreams about you. I mean, dream of the dreams about your son. It reveals he's he's coming home. He's coming back to the Lord. Um, he's you know, and then you just kind of follow the circle around. You don't say more than what this is saying. You don't say less. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. You let God expand it for him. Does that help? Uh, yeah, but, you know, 
Okay. Mara, do you want to? <laughs> Mara's got her. <laughs> no, I'm not saying a thing. <laughs> I'm not here. <laughs> oh, Karen's got her hand raised. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dream in this dream is about your son. It reveals that he is coming home back to the Lord, that um, God is shifting his, um, his, 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 everything from the past is becoming new, and he's having a awesome. new job, new preparation for his new job in the kingdom, and God is accelerating him to new things. It's a new day for him, and he's shifting into that with speed. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yes, that was awesome. Let's give the interpreter a hand. That was awesome. And so then we would pray for the streamer in this situation. Who would like to pray? I would. Awesome. Oh, Father God, I'm just so glad that you have given this dreamer this dream that she should be encouraged. Yes. Lord, she may have had concerns about her son, but he is returning. He's returning to God, and he's being dressed and prepared in such a way that he could step into a new life that God has prepared for him. And Father God, we are so grateful that she can be encouraged about this change in her son. She can see the change that is occurring in her son, and she can see a bright future for him, like this sunrise. Thank you, Lord, for this dream and for the dreamer. Amen. 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 That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Aren't dreams just incredible? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Slack it off, John. Picture of it. Okay. Throw on these. And where did that go? There it is. Okay. Yeah, it's rare that we have the dreams where the dreamer's uh, watching. Right? Those are... don't have a lot of those dreams here. We usually have where the dreamer's pretty involved. So that was a good example to show that when you're watching or observing in a dream, the dream is not about you. And if you're, if you're watching, I mean, if you're involved in the dream, often the dream's about you. If you're with other people doing things that can be about you and those that you're with, you know, because you could be dream, dreaming about being at work with your coworkers or being at church. Right. So that's where the other stuff comes in. Something corporate, yeah. All righty. dream help the new people and see where there is a, a dream that is not about the dreamer, even though the dreamer dreams it. Uh -huh. um, yeah. I have very seldom seen you interpret one that wasn't, I'm well, not new, but like he was thinking that they would be about the dreamer because the dreamer dreamed it, and this is an example, a perfect example of it cannot be always. Yeah, that, yeah. And so for the dreamer, that shows them how to pray to and how to come into agreement. The dreamer can say, yes, God, thank you, my son's coming home. Yeah. And how encouraging for the heart. Yeah. Okay, here is our next dream. I dreamed my brother was saying that he'd had a dream and he was really wondering about it and he kept talking about it. I was trying to ask him what it was so I could help him with the interpretation but it's like he wasn't hearing me and he kept talking about it. At one point he crossed a street and sat down against a wall on the other side. He was still pondering and talking about the dream. I still tried to tell him the interpretation. He finally stopped to listen for a minute but was quickly distracted when a bunch of kids came over and started talking to him. I finally got the message and started walking away. My sister tried to say I should tell him what it meant but I knew I had already tried to and he wasn't listening to what I had to say. So, that would be about both of them. Oh, very good, Rose. Oh, yeah, let's go back to the black. So, the dreamer. And, brother had a dream. And his brother, yeah. <clears throat> Tried to help, right? Yeah. Brother 
didn't listen, right? Right. You just kept talking about the dream. And then you cross the street. Sat down up against the wall. sister said wow okay I know it seemed like, it seemed like a small dream and I start to write it out about the sister too? Yeah, I think so. I think this is a dream of corporate. I think this is about a church. Ooh, yeah, that very well could be. Um, repeatedly, dreamer tries to interpret or is told to try and interpret. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then there's also a repeat of crossing the street or walking away. Oh, walked away? Because the brother walked away, the dreamer walked away, Okay. Okay. So, um, let's see. So, Ellen, you were saying? Yeah, I, I have a feeling this is a, corp a dream about this person. It's, since she knows how to interpret dreams, mm -hmm. she already has the wisdom in her. Um, and she's trying to tell, and it's not... And it's being all pushed back, pushed back, unreceived. unreceived. Mm -hmm. And then as she proceeds in the process, her sister says to, for her to try and interpret the dreams that we're talking about, brothers and sisters, what do we call our people in our congregation? But doesn't, at the very end, Leslie, doesn't it say that she said that she shouldn't do it because, or the dreamer decided she shouldn't do it because she'd already tried? Isn't that how it ended? Yeah. Which well, she one? knew she had already tried. But wasn't the brother the one trying to interpret the dream in the beginning? No, he was just pondering it. He was, so he was just pondering it and pondering it, but he right. wasn't. Because it was. He was. Lead. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. And so the sister. Because the sister was trying to get her to interpret, and then she said she decided that she shouldn't because she'd already tried. Right. She she knew it wasn't being received. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. But I was just wondering if we should end it there because. Like that was okay, yeah. Well, if it's about her ministry, her calling, I think at the end of this she realizes that the timing is not right. Mm -hmm. What about over here when he crossed the street and he sat down by a wall? I think that's his resistance. So a wall... He's on the barrier. Well, he, if he was on the other side of the wall, it would yeah. be different, but he's on that. But he's leaning against the wall. Yeah. So there's something Support. there that, what was that? Support. But he's leaning against, so if you have a wall up against someone and you're leaning against it, you know. Well, I'm just leaning back against the wall. Like he's almost. Yeah, so he's leaning against it, but if I had something against you, and um, and there was a wall between us, and I was, you know, so if I'm leaning against the wall, I'm leaning against what I have against you, so I'm not receiving from you. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Just the symbolic Is of it. Is the wall between them? Or, or? It's representative here. No, the wall, he's leaning on it. But if there's, if you have something against someone, then you have a wall up. But the wall is present. 
Yeah, and okay. he's leaning on it. He's uh -huh. resting against what he has against. Right. So, so there's a hindrance. He's telling he's resisting. Yeah, he doesn't receive from her. Right. Okay. And so at the end, that's what she recognizes. So that's the, you know, has a wall up, basically. I love her spirit. She's trying to. She's trying to help him. And he seems to be distressed. So what's the thing about the kids? Distracted by kids, is that? Distracted by his kids? Uh, it's a, it's a way that he can, another way he can turn her off. These aren't his kids, so they're just Or distracted by the believers. Or distracted by somebody young in the faith. If, if we're yeah. talking about a church. Oh. You know, like, if we're talking about a church, there could be maybe somebody who's not as mature, like... Oh, distracted, distracted by like, immaturity. Yeah, like somebody not not as mature as, like you know, you talking do. at him, whispering at him, and that just helps him to <coughs> not receive what she says. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Especially if he's looking not to receive. Right, exactly. There are none so blind as those who will not see. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> well said, yeah. <laughs> So when the sister says, interpret it, does, how does the sister and the dreamer, what's their relationship? What does that tell you about the sister? I think, I think they're both mature, and I think the sister is ready to receive and recognize that she's trying to help this other person. How do you think the sister thinks about dreams? She, she accepts the She receives. Yeah, she accepts. accepts it. Yeah, receives. Yeah. She receives, but... She also may not be quite as mature because of the fact that she's trying to push. To she's not. It's more of an encouragement oh, in so the dream. Yeah, it was more of a. The dreamer lost encouragement. That's why she walked away. She lost courage for telling him, the brother the dream interpretation, and then the sister comes up and is like, "No, I'm, you need to." I feel like, like, mm -hmm. like how that, we encourage each other. Right, but the dreamer also recognized at the end that mm -hmm. it wasn't the right time. I, yeah, I think the sister really wanted. Wanted her to help this person. Right, right. She was encouraging. She yeah, she was help. encouraging. But right. the she sister has experienced interpretation. what dream interpretation can do. Exactly. Right. So she's saying, no, persevere. Right. So, um, yes. So I have to tell you, who do you think the dreamer is? Your sister? If I gave you one guess, who's the dreamer? The dreamer's me. I had this dream, and, um, and, and so when I first went to interpret it, my brother and I do kind of have a, um, you know, that kind of a relationship. And so I was thinking, you know, I was thinking it was about him and stuff. And then and this is one when I started to write it down and diagram it, that I was like, Helen, this is about the church. And so what God revealed to me, because I had this just last week, so it's before we're starting another class. Mm -hmm. And what God basically spoke to me about, it, and I'm sharing this dream with you because God will um, show you, he will give you dreams ahead of time. I've, I've just heard some fantastic dreams of, of what God's given people lately that has given them wisdom in how to move forward. Mm -hmm. And so what God basically showed me through this is that the brothers, the brothers represent those that, that are, may still think dreams are new age, dreams are, you know, they're not, they're not from God, they're not biblical, and so they're not going to receive, they'll kind of listen a little bit, but they, they won't, and so the sister has already received it, understands dreams, believes in dreams, and is saying no, and so basically what I got out of this, and I, you know, there's more as it unfolds, that God was putting out of my heart, emphasized that it's biblical dream interpretation. A third of the Bible is dreams and visions, that some people need that foundation, that reminder, because God wants to talk to his people, and he speaks through dreams. So sometimes there's this, you know, struggle to help people be able to hear from God, because if they say no to, um, you know, dreams aren't real, they're not going to value them. If they don't believe dreams are for God, from God, they're not going to value them, not going to get the understanding that God has for them in it. And so, basically, that's, that was a short version of, of how it's unfolded. But just that, and then the sister saying, no, you got to keep at it, just keep encouraging. But the dreamer to know when to present and when to walk away is also important. Yes, because you can, you know... Um, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still, and 
then you, you mentioned that, you know, you can try to convince people, but sometimes you just need to back up and say, third of the Bible is visions and dreams. The New Testament started off with five dreams. So you go back, Matthew 1 and 2, there's five dreams in there. Do you think God speaks through dreams? Jesus spoke in parables, which dreams are night parables. So there's this language that God wants us to learn, wants us to exercise. And because we're in the Western society where a lot of us think left-brained and we've exercised that all our life, we don't see the signs he's speaking of. And we've seen unfold in this class as we learn dream interpretation and hearing God, understanding the symbolism that then throughout our day when God shows a sign that sticks out to us, we begin to realize he's talking to me through this sign. You know, and then it just continually unfolds where the Matthew 13 where it says, He who has more will be given. Mm -hmm. So those that have ears to hear and eyes to see, the more we exercise what God is saying and doing in our lives, showing us, the more we value it, the more we're going to receive. And then those, it says, those that don't receive, even what they think they have is going to be taken from them. So it's imperative. I'm passionate about dream interpretation because it leads people to hearing from God, which helps them understand how much God loves them. He pulls them in closer. They're in a closer relationship. And then they hear more of what God's saying and doing in the world around them. They can encourage others. They can see what God's doing. I mean, it just explodes. So dream interpretation is so powerful. And I just, you know, I love it so much because of all the different things it does for us. It gives us a better understanding of the word and how God speaks and all those things. So... So all that to say, I think he was showing you how passionate you are about it, and and, and he, he took you through the whole scenario, and then let you decide for yourself that this was not the right time for this individual, and this may be something that is coming up, where you'll come across somebody mm -hmm. that will react like this, mm -hmm. and it may be that you will find resistance in the church. Mm -hmm to dream interpretation, and don't be discouraged. Oh, no. Just and I have to tell you, like I think I started this in 2004, and you talked about dream interpretation in church in 2004, and people thought you were New Age. Yeah. They were like, oh, she's going out there, she's a little, and, and um, so... I think it's also uh, an uh, encouragement to practice discernment. Yes. Yes. For the time and season. Yes. Absolutely. And how trusting God is in you and your knowledge. Mm -hmm. This is wonderful. It really is good. And I know the first time I was in church and the pastor said, everybody raise your hands at the next time, next song we sing. And I thought, why? I grew up in the Episcopal Church. We, you know, stood, knelt, and sat, but we never rose our hands. So um, I was like, I'm not going to raise my hands. And then when the song ended, he goes, maybe those that couldn't raise their hands will be able to next time. And I thought... I will never raise my hands, you know, because I wasn't taught. And, of course, you know, fast forward 30 years, God says, so what are you going to do? <laughs> because Psalm says, lift up holy hands to the Lord. Well, you know, it's a place when the Spirit fills you, you can't help but raise your hands. Yes. It's a, it's a thing, you know, yes. that happens to you. If you grow up in a conservative church... It's very hard. It is. I, it's really, really hard. I grew up in a Methodist church, and we didn't even get to stand and, and kneel. We just had to sit. They, they wow. called us the frozen chosen. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> really? We're all frozen. free, and there's that freedom now. And we're stepping yeah. into new beginnings yeah. and reformation, restoration. Yeah. So, all right, let's pray. We went a little bit late tonight. So, Father, thank you so much for dreams. Thank you that you are a God who speaks to us, that you love us, and you want to show us more of yourself. I thank you for tonight and all that you had, and I pray, Lord, that the things we cover, the things we shared, Father, that all those seeds of your truth would go deep into our hearts. Holy Spirit, that you would breathe on them and that they would come into full fruition of all that you've planned and purposed for them. 
Lord, I thank you for this dream, and I pray it for all of us dream interpreters, Lord, that we will know how to share the truth about dream interpretation, that it's from you, that you love to speak in parables and signs and symbols, and Lord, that you grant us greater understanding of those things, and that you would grant us an ability to speak in words that people can understand and receive the fullness that you have for them. Father, I thank you that you surround and protect us with your hedge of protection. I ask for a blessing on each person here, each person watching online, everyone that watches this, Lord. You said that there's a blessing for everyone who reads Revelation, and we read Revelation tonight, so let your blessings be unleashed from heaven over us. Father, we love you. I ask that you draw us closer to you, to your heart, Lord, to your ways, to your character, to who you are. And Father, I thank you that you just continue to unveil yourself to us in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and the multi-dimensions that you are. Lord, I pray for protection. I pray that you go before us, that you're our rear guard, and that you're above and below us as well. And Father, I um, just want to give you glory and thank you and praise you for who you are, Lord. We praise you. We love you. We love you. We love you, God. You are so, so good. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know what's neat about this dream, Leslie, is that it works on so many different ways.